Page 104, Fanfare Etude. It's an etude, a study piece. This one is an etude on the A minor key, key of A minor. It's got the scale, it's got some primary chords and A minor things to look for. Cut time, but I'm going to talk about it like it's in 4-4 time at first. Because if it's in cut time, those eighth notes are 1-E and a 2-E and a 1-E and a 2-E and a blech. So I'll just put it in 4-4 time. It's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. I will do the cut time a little later. Right hand first. It's the beginning. This is just an A minor scale. And 2. 1 and scale that should be easy for you now we're not using the harmonic minor here we're using the natural minor because the harmonic minor with the seventh step the G would be a G sharp it would be this but here it's just the natural minor so we don't change anything it's just the way it is with the key signature and then measure four you have the one chord and then the four chord now, watch this. In measure five, you have these chords. And in measure six, you got this chord, and you're coming down. When I get this pattern, I don't like using the same fingers all the time. So what I do on measure four to prepare is the in the one chord instead of one three five, I do a one two four. And then the next chord is a 1-3-5, like it says. And the measure 6 it is a 1-4-5. I just bring the little finger up. And here. So it's this. It's a little more advanced fingering. You may not want to, if you're struggling, forget it. Just do the fingering in the book. But. This fingering I'm showing you will help you out a great deal as the music gets more difficult. So I'm encouraging you, if you're doing okay, try it. And anywhere else in this etude you get that passage, I'd finger it the same way. Measure 12, you're here. And then for 13, it's here. I don't recommend that. Because now we're going to go back and forth between here here. It's the 1 and 5-7. I don't recommend it. So uh, you can start here on the one chord, but for the next measure 13, get, use the second finger and go here. That's a two, three, five. And a one, three. The three is going back and forth. And I'm using here. Now there's other fingers we can use besides that, because I can do here. Do a one four five, and then I've got two and three reserved for those. It's another way of fingering it. It's a little more awkward, but it works. So you got to do it sometimes. However, I was I think this is fine just to go here. Now I got larger hands. I don't like having my hands up in this area. So when I can have finger it in such a way it keeps my hand out here, I do. So this lets me do that. I keep my hand out here. If you have really small hands, this doesn't matter. You can be up here. Because you're not going to want to come out here back and forth all the time. You Stay up here if you're going to do that. Come out a little. But don't come. That's too much movement. You have to decide on the fingering you want to do. I'm going to do it here for that note. And then, last line. 20, you're up here. And then here, here, it's a one chord, we're just in first inversion. And then the last note, it's two ledger lines below the staff, so one ledger line is middle C, and all that. Two would be an A, then it's an A. It's in the key of A minor, so okay. Left hand, you're starting down here with an A that's held forever. Measure three, then you get the scale. And then play it again, and then hold it down forever, and then some quarter notes, and then a rest, and then you hold it down again forever, and you're okay. Measure 13. You have a rest, you can come up. One, two. Now we're in the melodic minor area, because these notes are the sixth and seventh step of the scale, 
And in melodic minor, you raise them when you go up, so we raise them. Reach up. Measure 16, it's a 2 and then a 1. Because that way we're in position for 17 to go down here. Reach down, and then thumb. Measure 20, you're here. And then here. You could do 3 or 2, whichever, and then here. And then the last measure, it's an A with an AVA under it, so you go down. Put the hands together slowly. One and two and three. One and two. And then you play it. You work it out, hands together, as far as the technique goes for doing this. I mean, they talk about cushioning and up and all. If you do the technique, I explained it in the scale video. That's what I would prefer because you can apply that technique to all of this. So this, if you're going to go real slow, maybe you can let the wrist collapse with a slight accent on each quarter note beat. One. you do in the scale and then you speed it up then maybe it would be every two quarter note and eventually it'd be like one per measure depends on how fast you're going but for practice and you, you let the wrist clutch just a little bit with each accent and put in the accent force the accents when you finally play it you'll you won't force anything but when you're practicing it it really helps to force the accents on these beats. Then on measure five, you have accents in the right hand. Play them a little louder. And the staccato accent. Now no accents for measures nine and ten, but then staccatos. connected and there a measure 18 connect those quarter notes to the next half note there don't don't disconnect it uh -uh, that's rather unmusical it leads into it connect it to it so you don't always lift up before and after a slur most of the time you do you have to take it on a case by case basis here I would not lift up after it. So I'm going to lift up the right hand because that's a chord, but not the left. And now they've got these little arrows. Well, that's just telling you to lift your wrist. I don't go off to the side or swoop it or nothing. It's just an up-down motion. It's not a big motion. I'm doing the same thing in both hands. hands got to move. You're going to here and to here. From here to here. You may have to practice that. Don't take a lot of time to do it, but you don't have to be quick and jerky. You don't have to be real quick about it. You just lift up and move. Maybe about an eighth note equal to an here. here. And that's an accent there too. With a fermata, so you hang on to it even longer than that. When I do this with a metronome, I will simply double it and I'll hold it for eight counts instead of two, or I'll hold it for eight quarter notes instead of four. Then the dynamics, well, they went loud, and that would be, so where's the melody here? So it's hard to tell. You're almost going to take both hands together. It's the same. I mean, you can experiment. It, it sounds like the melody's in the right hand at first. That makes these accented notes very loud for that one note. note on page 104 subito means all of a sudden suddenly without warning just all of because you're loud 
now all of a sudden you're soft. And that's why there's no accents. You don't want accents, there's no soft. Now come up a little bit to moderately soft. And crescendo up to moderately loud. That's moderately loud on measure 15. So you're going to take two measures to go from moderately soft to moderately loud. Hmm. Take your time. Stay. It's the left hand that's doing it. Now moderately loud. Now you're going to go up to loud. Plus they're accented. I don't know that you need accents on loud notes because that just makes them very loud. Both hands. And there's a retardando there on measure 20. You slow down a little bit. You end it. Very loud. Oh, isn't that nice? Woo. Then the speed. Well, now we put it back in cut time. We want to feel this in two. One. Two. As far as how fast the two goes, it depends on what's in it, as in these eighth notes. How fast can you play this accurately? One, two, one, two, one, two, one. However fast you can do that accurately is the speed of the piece. Don't play this at one speed. And then after you're done with it, you get to, to the half notes and then take off. Keep it once the same speed throughout. So however fast this is. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's the speed. Huh? It's up to you. It has to be accurate. Now they've added pedal, and I I have to disagree with that completely. We want I like a clean sound, and it's okay to have overtones, but not at the expense of getting too muddy. Unless the atmosphere of the piece is a muddy, misty, foggy thing, then okay, blurry is okay. This is not. This is a fanfare. So. Pedal. I mean, you can use pedal in some cases on these chords to help bring them out and connect them. And that's fine, but not all of it. So these first couple measures, this line, if I pedal it the way they're saying, this is what you get. Like that. If that's what you want, that's fine. Go for it. It sort of works because it's so fast. And the accents help to bring it out. I'm going, go all the way up to here, all the way up to here, all the way down to here, huh? Maybe you want that. Otherwise, leave the pedal out on the first line. So forth. But then when you get to measure four, that's fine. Here we want the overtones. I'm going to push the pedal down. Here you can, you know, right after the note. Here, I'm going to change the pedal right after the notes. Measure six with each half note. And then lift it up as I play. Measure seven, lift it up as I play the whole note. So again, measure four is here, or start on measure three, you're here. Again, change. Now they're, they're paddling measure 14, I disagree, I see no point in that. tones for this. I, I think I would like a cleaner sound here. I want to hear this phrase here. Now you can add it. And then at the end, with each chord, play the chord and then change the pedal. together. That's my impression of the pedal. Pedal it the way they show if you want, but I find that a little too blurry for my taste. I prefer it different. Pedaling is a suggestion. The markings are a suggestion. 
What I tell you is a suggestion. Ultimately, it's what you like to hear, but you have to be listening to it because a lot of people, they just pedal everything. They're not really listening to the sound. They're just pedaling. It's a habit. Please don't. Listen to the sound and use pedal only when you need it. I'd like to play this with you very slowly. I'm going to put it back in 4-4 four, four time. Let's just go over the notes and rhythms. Now I can do the dynamics. I'll go ahead and pedal the half notes, the chords like they're showing, more or less. But I'm not going to pedal the first line, those first two measures, no. So I'll give us four count, four quarter note counts. Let's play it together. One, two, Ready and go and one and one and two one two four two four two three four one two Four. 